Welcome to the office of the Westchester County Clerk's Westchester Records Online, or WRO, tutorial series. And welcome on behalf of Westchester County Clerk Tim Idoni. Today's WRO tutorial will cover the basics of using Westchester Records Online, including entering as a guest and as a registered user, navigating the sections of WRO, and the basics of searching land records. To begin, navigate to Westchester Records Online at wro.westchesterclerk.com. On the login screen, you will find three large buttons to allow you to immediately enter the system and search land records, legal records, or maps as a guest. Or you can enter your user ID and password to enter as a registered user, which allows you to open, view, print, and save documents. If you would like to register to view images, click the link just above the login fields. You will then be led through a series of screens to set up a registered user account and be provided with subscription and payment options. We offer two subscription levels, a one-day subscription for $20, which ends at midnight of the following day, or a year-long subscription for $1,200, which ends 365 days from the current day. If you're already a registered user, but your subscription has expired, simply log in with your username and password, and you'll be given the option to purchase additional time for your existing account. If you've forgotten your username or password, you can click on the appropriate link below the login fields. In this video, we're learning the basics of searching records, so we'll simply log in as a guest by clicking the Land Records button on the left. Once you've entered WRO, you will see that the system is split into three separate tabs for each of the main sections, Land Records, Legal Records, and Maps. Under each tab are sub-tabs that allow you to conduct different types of searches within each section. Each section is laid out with search fields in a frame on the left-hand side and instructions and search results in the frame on the right. Under the Land Records tab, you can search for any land records, such as deeds and mortgages that have been recorded in Westchester County, UCC financing statements, or federal tax liens and other federal liens. Under the Legal Records tab, you can search for cases filed in the Supreme and County Courts of Westchester County, as well as judgments and business records filed with this office. Under the Maps tab, you can search subdivision maps filed with this office, as well as various resource maps that are not official, but have come into the possession of this office over the years, such as county atlases going back to 1867. We're going to examine the basics of searching for land records, so we'll click the Land Records tab to return to that section. As you navigate through the sections of WRO, you can click the information icon next to elements in the system for a brief explanation of that particular item. All land records are indexed by name in Westchester County and not by address. The most common type of land record search is to search for documents by the name of one of the parties. To do so, simply type the name or part of the name of the person or entity for whom you are searching for documents. If you don't know the exact spelling of the individual's name, you can simply enter a few letters of his or her first and last name, and WRO will search for any parties that begin with those letters. If you receive too many results, you can narrow down your search with the parameters below the name fields. There are buttons that allow you to limit the search only to individuals or only to businesses. In this example, the user is searching for a person whose last name is Macy, but the initial results show 442 results, and all the top results are corporations. By clicking on the button for individual, and then clicking search again, the user limits his search to only people with the word Macy in their last names, and cuts our search results down from 442 to 112. You can further limit the search to a first party or second party, if you know whether the party you are searching for is the buyer or the seller, or the mortgagor or the mortgagee, etc. In this case, we'll say that the first party, or seller, was a person with the last name Macy. So we will limit our search to only first parties, and our search results are narrowed from 112 to 65. Since we know that the property we're interested in is located in Mount Pleasant, we can further limit our search by choosing Mount Pleasant from the City or Town drop-down. At this point, you should be able to determine which document you're looking for from the 10 remaining results, but if you want to further narrow it down, you could choose the type of document you are looking for or the document group you are looking for. 
The document drop-down has the names of specific documents, and the document group drop-down has related types of documents, such as conveyance papers or mortgage papers. If you are specifically looking for a mortgage, you could choose mortgage as the document type, but it's often better to choose the document group, so you can see if there are any related documents. In the example we've been looking at, narrowing the search to only mortgages yields six results, but if instead we narrowed it to the mortgage papers group, we would receive eight results, as there was a correction mortgage recorded in 1988, which supersedes the mortgage recorded in 1987. Once we've narrowed down our search to documents that might be of interest, you may notice that some of the documents listed in your results are clearly not documents that you are interested in. You can click the small X on the lines of any documents that are not of interest to remove them from your search results. In this instance, we may be looking for any documents from 1986 forward, so I'll click the X's on the first two lines, which are from 1984. If you'd like to print a listing of the documents that remain in your results after narrowing them down, you can click Print at the top of the results listing and a print dialog box will open and print the formatted list. Do not just use the browser's print command, as the formatting will likely cut off some of the information. If you need more information about any of the documents listed in your results, you can click Details at the end of the line for any of the documents to view additional details about that document. If there's a Y in the Notes column for a document, that means there's at least one document cross-referenced to that document, and clicking Details will show information about the cross-referenced document. You may notice that each of the documents in our results is listed twice. That's because we put in a last name, but no first name, so each document is listed for each of the two parties that have the same last name. If I enter an R or an N in the first name field, it will further narrow down our results to include only R Macy or N Macy. If you still need additional information about a document or documents and want to view the images of documents, you can log in as a registered user and you will see that the gray image icons are now yellow and can be opened in your browser. The specifics of the registration and renewal processes are beyond the scope of this video, but to create an account, you will want to click Home to return to the login screen and then click the link above the login fields to register. Or if you previously created an account, you can log in with your user ID and password and click Renew in the upper right corner. If you're logged in as a registered user and click on a yellow image icon and nothing happens, the most common reason is because of a pop-up blocker. Each browser is a little different in how they handle blocked pop-ups, but most give an indication in the address bar, often with a tiny red X that isn't terribly noticeable. By clicking on the X, it gives me options to continue blocking pop-ups, allow this pop-up, or always allow pop-ups from this site. It's recommended that you tell the browser to always allow pop-ups for WRO. After allowing pop-ups, you should be able to click the image icon and it will open a new browser window as a PDF document. Now that we've thoroughly examined the various aspects of searching for a land record by party name, we will click the Search by Number sub-tab and look at how to view a land record when you already have the control number or library and page. If the document you are looking for was recorded in 1967 or later, you simply need to type the control number or library and page in the correct fields and click Search. If you are looking for a document recorded prior to 1967, choose Pre-1967 from the drop-down list, enter the library and page, then choose the appropriate book from Deeds, Miscellaneous, Mortgages, or Satisfactions, and click Search. Notice that some documents recorded prior to 1967 appear as a negative image, as white writing on black paper. The image viewer has a button on the bottom that allows you to invert the colors to make the document easier to read. You can also look up the cross-references, or notes, to a document by choosing Notes from the drop-down and then entering a control number or library and page. If the document has any cross-references, they will appear in your search results to the right. Finally, if you would like to look up a land record recorded prior to 1967 by the party's names, you can click the Index Book sub-tab to view the indexes prior to 1967. To use the index books, you must specify the name of the party, 
whether they were a grantor, grantee, or mortgagor if you're looking up a deed or a mortgage, or else miscellaneous if you're searching for another type of document. You then must select a year range and a city or town. If you're searching the oldest books from 1680 to 1898, you won't need to select a city or a town. You may also notice the WPA books in the year range drop-down, which are retyped books consolidating the years 1898 through 1931. After entering your search parameters and clicking search, you will see one or more index books in your search results. Click the image for the index book to view the index for the year range and municipality that you specified. Scan the names in the book until you find the transaction that you are looking for. In this example, we're looking for the deed from Jackson Smith to John Reed. When we find that transaction in the index book, we will type the library and page that we find at the end of the line in the library and page fields at the bottom of the viewer and then hit enter or else click show document. The document will open in a frame on the right side. This particular document has inverted colors, so I'll click the Show Document Inverted button at the bottom of the viewer to switch it to black print on white paper. I can also click the arrow in the frame divider to collapse the index book and view only the document I'm interested in. If I want to review the index book again, I can click the arrow to expand the frame again. If you realize that this is not the document you're looking for, you can expand the frame by dragging it with your mouse pointer and continue scanning the index book and entering the library and page numbers for different documents in the same window until you find the document that you are searching for. Thank you for joining us today for the WRO Basics tutorial video. Please visit us online and check out our other tutorials at westchesterclerk.com and visit our YouTube channel and Facebook page and please follow us on Twitter. Thank you.